Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks here that I've discovered and found here in macOS Big Sur. So these are some things that you may not have known about. Some of them you probably have known, but they are pretty helpful uh, that make your experience a little bit better here on Big Sur. So I got a little bit over 10 of them, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so first one here has to do with your battery. So you can now override the battery health management feature. So right now I can't show it to you because my battery is at 100%, but if you take your computer on and off the charger frequently, you may notice that sometimes it's not charging all the way up to full. And the reason why is it's trying to extend the life of your battery over time because charging to 100% is not usually the best thing to do. So you may notice this number sometimes hover around 90 something percent, maybe a little lower as it learns your charging habits. Now let's say you are getting ready maybe to leave and your computer is limiting the battery from charging fully. Well now what you can do is you can click on your battery in the menu bar and when available, there will be an option right here that says charge to full now. So if you click on that, it will override the battery health management. So that's a little helpful feature for you there to do with your battery. Speaking of your battery, I've been getting this question quite frequently in the comments. How did you get your battery percentage in the menu bar? So in macOS Big Sur, your battery percentage is now off by default. So it does not show up here. Now you may think you go into your battery settings in system preferences and you can toggle it on in there, but that's actually not the case. As you can see, all we have is a show battery status in menu bar. And if we click on that, well, that takes our battery completely out. So we definitely don't want that. Instead, what you have to do in system preferences is go to the brand new dock and menu bar section, and then you can scroll down over here to battery. And when you do that, there is the option to show percentage. So as you can see, uncheck it, it's gone, and we can check it again, and there it is. So if you like to see your percentage like I do, then you have to go enable it in the dock and menu bar settings. While we're in this new dock and menu bar section here, let's talk a little bit about the control center. So the control center is a pretty important thing here now in Mac OS, as you can see, it allows you to access some of your quick settings that you use most frequently. So your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. Well, you can now take these out of your control center and put them into the menu bar. So if you just hold down on one of these, let's do screen mirroring, and you can drag it up to the menu bar wherever you want it to be. So there's how we put it up there. So you can drag and drop things from control center to your menu bar. Now, if we actually want to remove this, well, we have to go into our dock and menu bar settings. Then we can scroll down to whichever one we did. So we did screen mirroring and we're going to have to uncheck it here in order to remove it. But if you want to add one of these quick settings to your menu bar, it's as simple as that now. And by the way, you still hold down command and then click and drag these around in any order that you would like. If you want to change the order, of course, if we head over to our general settings, this is where we can choose our different colors and appearances for Mac OS. So now you can choose multicolor under your accent color. And for your highlight, you can choose whatever the accent color is. So now we have multicolored. So this is kind of cool because it allows different applications to kind of pick their own colors. Now, obviously Mac OS stuff is all going to be uh, typically blue, but you may find some other apps that are different colors. So it kind of just adjusts the different colors based on what you're using. So it kind of gives you a feeling that you're using a different app every single time. I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. You just have to try it out and use it, but you can now choose that if you would like. While we're in here, there's another new option that says allow wallpaper tinting in windows. So if you uncheck that, you got to look really closely but you can see this kind of goes away from the tent. So all these new windows here in Mac OS Big Sur are kind of transparent just a little bit. So whatever wallpaper you have, it kind of influences the color of your window. So you can turn that off and just have your typical white uh, window here. 
uh, if you do not want that. But yeah, that's another new option here in your general settings. If you go into your sound settings, you'll find a new option for your startup sound. So it says play sound on startup. So everybody knows in Catalina, they completely got rid of the startup sound. There was a little workaround. You could actually enable it through the terminal, but now you actually have a more simpler way to turn it on and off with this checkbox right here. So no longer do you have to actually put that terminal command in. You can just go change it here in your sound settings. If we head back up into our menu bar, there's another new thing that you can add, and it's actually a now playing little button here. So if I click on this, you're gonna see whatever music was recently playing and from what source. So I use Spotify, so you can see that this is a song that was last playing, but the cool thing is it will actually show you all sources that were recently playing. So if I had opened Apple Music, for example, and I was also using Spotify, I would see both of these appear in this little drop down here. And you can control both of them uh, right here as well. Now this now playing is also in your control center. It's located right down here at the bottom. But the cool thing about the now playing feature is its ability to have it appear when active. So if we go into our dock and menu bar settings, we can scroll down until we see now playing right here. And if you choose when active or always, but for when active, that's the default, whenever music starts to play is when it will appear in the menu bar. So if I go down here and close Spotify, and it's gonna take it a second to close there, and you're gonna watch this actually disappear. So there it goes. So only it will appear when music is playing. So nice, quick and easy way to control your music now here in Big Sur. If we take a look at accessibility settings here, we can scroll down now to a section called Spoken Content. Now the new feature here is Speak Your Typing Feedback. So for people who may have a hard time uh, reading a screen, you can now have the computer actually play back whatever you type. So if you just check that, you'll be able to enable that option. Here's a quick little tip for your widgets. So we obviously have the new widgets here in Mac OS Big Sur, and we can see that there are some new sizes for widgets. Now, I honestly thought you had to go into edit widgets, delete the one you already had, and change the size, but actually, all you gotta do is right click on a widget that can have its size changed, and you just choose the new size that you want. So that's a pretty nice, quick, and easy way to change the size of your widgets. If we take a look at Safari, we now have obviously Safari 14 with some pretty nice new features such as the privacy tracking, but now you have the ability to search your open tabs. So if you click on the show tab overview button, you see a new search bar that will appear right here. So if you have a billion tabs open, you can search for it. So just start typing something and the appropriate tab will appear and you can click on it and go right to it. So nice way to navigate your tabs if you have a whole lot of them open. Apple obviously, so for your Macintosh HD, we now of course use the Apple file system. We have been using that for several versions of Mac OS, but now you can finally make your Time Machine backup drive the Apple file system. So if we go to erase right here, and instead of choosing Mac OS Extended, you click on this and you can see that we now have the APFS format right here. And we also have it in encrypted, case sensitive, and case sensitive encrypted. So you can now just go ahead and match your Time Machine backup file system to your Macintosh HD's file system, or I guess I should say format. Now the only reason why I don't do this is because I actually share uh, one a one terabyte hard drive with my other files here so that's why there's two discs on my desktop so I have to keep it as Mac OS extended but if you want to now and I believe by default it probably when you set up a new time machine drive and system preferences I believe it formats it by default now as the Apple file system but I'm not quite sure about that so that's a new feature here in 
Big Sur. Then finally here is a thing to do with your notes app. So if we enable dark mode on here, we can do that by quickly going right there. So here's dark mode and you can see that the note background actually goes dark. Obviously that's what it's supposed to do, but that could be hard at times to actually see. And some people prefer a white background on notes. I know that I actually do. So you can now right click on your note space here and you can click on the show note with light background. So what that'll do is instead of being in dark mode, it will take it to a white background for you. So that's pretty cool. And if you want to uh, leave it like that and it goes out of dark mode, I'll show you. We go out of dark mode, it all goes back to normal. But if we go back into dark, it leaves the setting uh, that you last set here. So it's individual notes. You can't just change them all at once, but pretty cool feature there. And guys, that's all the tips and tricks I got for you today. I plan on making some more videos like this. I'm trying to see if maybe this is something that you all might be interested in. So let me know if you want to see some other like top things in Mac OS or top things somewhere else or tips and tricks, videos like that. But yeah, that's all I got for you today. Hope these helped you out. Hopefully you may not have known all of them. Uh, some of them are kind of hidden, some of them are not, but I think they're pretty helpful tips. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll catch you on the next video.